the formidable robot. Chipmunks. God. I can't even say that word anymore without thinking of Larry Lawson. He's moved from shoddily made VHS tapes and fake intrusions to live broadcasting, from the CD underground to full view of all. He has reared his head once again in my life, and presumably the lives of some others too. I saw him, I saw what he had to say. He's lost it now. He's reached the event horizon. I was laying on my couch one evening, searching through the channels on my TV. It was a slog to say the least, nothing good was on, or at least nothing good to me. News, weather, a few discovery channels that were insanely boring, looking at you science channel. I rolled my eyes when I saw an episode of Ancient Aliens. As I searched, I found something that I hadn't watched in ages. Nicktoons. It was so surreal to see it again, as I had fond memories of watching it after school with some of my friends. Well, before it became a dumping ground for the shows Nickelodeon didn't want, at least. That's when I remembered that they'd made a new version of Elvin and the Chipmunks, which happened to be on at the time. Now, I'm a pretty big fan of the 80s series and the live-action movies, but I never really got into the 2010s one, mostly due to how they redesigned the characters. They looked like human children with tails and weird noses, and it made me uncomfortable. I'd never watched an episode before though, so I decided to see what it was all about. It was already midway, but I didn't care. There was Simon, standing in a small room illuminated in reds and oranges, adjusting a bow tie in a mirror. He was dressed very well, he had his hair combed back and slick with gel. Alvin peeked into the room and asked him if he was ready to show the world his love. Simon turned towards him and said that he was, and that it would be exactly how they practiced that afternoon. It seemed that he was the mastermind of something for once, as opposed to his older brother. The scene then faded to Jeanette, snacking on a finger sandwich as Simon sauntered over to her. You're beautiful tonight, Jenny, he said, blushing. She didn't seem to have much of a reaction, but then Simon spoke again as if she responded. I'd like to dedicate the song to you, one that started my passion for music. Get it, boys. Suddenly, the school band that had been playing was interrupted by the other chipmunks. Theodore kicked off the percussionist and played a rapid drum roll that ignited my interest. Alvin shredded the guitar, all too familiar to me. No, they didn't. I said to myself, stunned at the fact they'd even reference Call Me. Then they started singing. Color me your color baby, color me your car. Simon sung, reaching out his hand and started spinning around Jeanette. The others provided backup, while Brittany and Eleanor could be seen in the background, just as bewildered as I was. At times, they tried breaking up the pair, but failed every time. Simon and Jeanette prepared to kiss as the chorus stopped, but then there was an abrupt distortion. Both of them were startled, it seemed, which was odd. Another thing that I immediately noticed was that the animation looked somewhat amateur, choppier and rigid. All that was the same was the character models, which now stood in a black void. Color me with kisses baby, color me with love. A door from off camera was opened by an unknown individual, and was pouring with white light. Roll me in designer sheets, I'll never get enough. Simon and Jeanette looked up and saw a long-haired man clad in a black sweater and glasses. He was initially neutral, but soon smiled and held up a sledgehammer. Emotions come, I don't know why. He raises the hammer and swings, blood splattering up in slow motion. Cover up love's alibi. The scene pans back down, and you can see a woman laying on a bare patch of grass, somewhere in the woods. Her glasses were broken and her almost fluorescent green hair was messy. Her entire face had caved in, a chasm of bone shards and anguish. Text appeared on the screen as it zoomed in on the body. You must suffer too. You'll all feel the same way I did. Footage of Larry searching through his notebook soon followed. Bottles and wires has been strewn across the ground, he gave no commentary as he showed off his artwork. The sketches were mostly of Jeanette and Simon in the style of the 80s series, but one was quite different from the others. 
it showed Larry himself sitting in a chair with two other people behind him. One, assumed to be his father, had a noose around his neck, while the other, labeled Mum, was horrifically stretched and depicted as inhuman. Larry spoke in a shrill cracked voice as he fixated on this picture. I was an obstacle. He stood up. Another camera recording him now, which was of much better quality. His room was covered in blue lights and various pieces of technology. He used a crutch to get himself up, before pointing it at the camera. This is for everyone who bothered to listen. Or for all who plagued me. For Roach, who understood me more than any other, but paid the price. She tried to escape, but failed. For Jacob Beauregard Lawson, my father, a man who lied to all, and left me to the devices of others. For Isadora Lawson, my mother, rotting away somewhere within the bowels of the News 8 building. For Maximilian, my therapist, who I thought I could trust. But instead, he led me to my own destruction. For all the unfortunate people watching this without context. You all will understand. Larry grabs something from off screen, which was initially hard to see due to the lighting. As soon as he gripped it though, I realized what it was. A gun. He then said something that I recognized from the tape he sent me. The oldest gets all the praise, the youngest gets all the love. I got nothing. Goodbye cruel world. He said, as a loud bang jostled the room and caused the camera to fall onto the ground. It was black, black as that night he and Roach were alone in the woods. Text faded in, giving one last message before Nick took back the reins. The devil is a squirrel, but anguish is a chipmunk. Immediately the next day, I checked my phone and checked the news to see if anyone knew of what happened yesterday. There was nothing that I could find even referencing it besides a photo I took of Larry during his monologue about the people in his life. Even in death, no one seemed to bother with him. My condolences to anyone who knew him, because he didn't deserve his pain. Sure, he wasn't in the right for murdering his girlfriend, obviously, but it was preventable. Someone should have stepped in. Someone should have said something. I never said anything. I must make it right. <laughs>